Welcome back to the show. You know that excessive heat we experienced in June? It wasn't just uncomfortable, it was also deadly. More than 100 deaths in Washington and Oregon can be attributed to the heat. So looking ahead, is more heat in store for our region? And what role does climate change play in all this? For insight, we've turned to former King 5 meteorologist Jeff Renner, who is doing consulting on weather and climate issues. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning, Amity. It's good to be with you again. It's so good to see your face. Long time no see. Um, I, we're glad to talk with you about this, though, because this past week's heat wave, it's been different from previous years, correct? Oh, without question. We had three consecutive days of 100 degree heat, uh, culminating in 107 on June 28th. And before the two instances at SeaTac, we had 100 degree heat. They were well separated. They were single day events. Yeah, and that's pretty incredible when you see that. I actually did forecasting in the Central Valley of California. That was the norm. I could not believe seeing these triple digit temperatures here, much less three consecutive days in a row. During the last heat wave, the emergency rooms they had a surge in patients. I mean, this has got to have a huge impact on Northwest residents, correct? Oh, it does, without question. I think the biggest fatalities were up in British Columbia, the town of uh, Lytton hit 121 degrees. They had over 400 deaths in BC. Wow. And the coroner up there is saying that several hundred of those could be directly attributed to heat. Uh, here, I'm just looking at some figures in Washington. The last stats were 39 alone, and I think those will probably go up. Yeah, and people are wondering, you know, exactly how the heat affects. I mean, it can cause a heart attack if people are having, <laughs> you know, breathing issues because the air quality was terrible too. The air quality was bad, certainly heart attacks, various other pulmonary diseases, all those could be attributed to it. Yeah, absolutely. So during the decades that you've been forecasting the weather, you've observed, have you any observed any changes in patterns? Well, we have, and those have to be uh, confirmed by the Climate Impacts Group at the UW, for example. But definitely we saw they were becoming, I think it's fair to say, more persistent and also more extreme. Uh, I should also point out that the World Meteorological Organization projects that heat deaths will probably triple over the next 30 years because of this trend. Wow, triple, oh my gosh. Very right. sobering. It's unreal. Um, are we gonna start to see temperatures on the regular, a, a lot more like maybe like Southern California here in the Pacific Northwest? I think that is still unknown at this point, okay. but one of the things that we are likely to see is a gradual shift to maybe more southern Oregon, northern California would be most reasonable. I think one of the greatest breakthroughs that we've seen is something called weather attribution, where the question is not, did climate change cause a given event, such as uh, the heat wave we saw in June, but is it making them more likely and is it making them more extreme? So I know this is kind of a tricky topic, but is it possible to say that climate change has been responsible for this? Well, that exactly that falls exactly into that issue of weather attribution. And uh, again, they're saying that they can't say a given event caused or was caused by climate change. What they are saying is it can make it more likely and more extreme. Uh, you might remember the Australian fires of 2019-2020. Uh, yeah. They said that was, pardon me, that was made 10 times more likely by climate change. 10 times more likely. So we're talking about the extreme heat, but we've also had some very cold, very snowy winters. Man, you were right. lucky you weren't in the King 5 newsroom because we were all oh, staying at the hotel down I the street. I gave for that. My <laughs> colleague, Rich Marriott, and I used to laugh about that. He laughed less than I did because yeah. I didn't have to be in there for all of that. But um, I have a very steep driveway. I had to do lots of shoveling in 2019. And yet, the area of the U.S. impacted by uh, the snows, the unseasonable cold, was about 2% of the global total surface area. So that's a little bit, I'd say that's a little bit like comparing the occasional interception of Russell Wilson to his more typical, what would we say, pro ball performance. So the overall exception can't drive the rule. Right. That makes a good, that's a good point. Well, I think the question everyone wants to know, um, I know that it's hard to say at this point, but do you think we're going to see another heat wave like this this summer or even in the fall? Should I take the blankets off my windows now? Well, I would certainly leave that up to Rich Marriott and his <laughs> colleagues here at King 5 and the people who are doing day-to-day -day forecasting, which I don't do anymore. 
Uh, I think when you see this in June, which the other ones at SeaTac were in July, Amity, uh, you do have to wonder, because we have the hottest period of July yet to come. It used to be said the best time to take vacation because of sunshine was the latter two weeks of July, the first two weeks of August. So is it possible? Certainly. But I'd say uh, my advice would be to tune in to Rich and the rest of the forecasting staff there at King 5. I think that's great advice, Jeff. Thank you so much. I know that you're not doing this anymore, but I hope we can bug you again about this because this has been incredibly helpful. Thank you. It's been a delight being on with you, Amity. Thank you. We'll see you soon.